Now we are back, and I would like uh, Deacon Mark Kimlinger of St. Vincent Paul Catholic Church to give us our invocation. Thank you, sir. Let us bow our heads and thank God Almighty for the gift of this day and the blessings that he gives us each in our, our lives. We thank you, God, for this community and are grateful for our city council members who give of their time to pursue the best interest of our citizens. We ask you, God, to send your Holy Spirit upon this council meeting tonight, granting them wisdom and insight into the matters before them and our community. Guide us all to know what your will is on each of these items to be discussed. May the time tonight be for the benefit of our city and for your honor and glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. We have uh, two presentations this evening. The first is a proclamation, which I'll come down here in front for. Whereas any emergency can occur at any time that requires the prompt response of law enforcement, firefighters, and paramedics, and their service is critical to the protection of life and the preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Cape Girardeau 911 Public Safety Communication Center, our communicators are first are the first and most critical contact citizens with emergency services. And whereas communicators are a vital partner with our law enforcement and fire personnel by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety, they serve as an indispensable link between the public and our officers and vital support services, exhibiting compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job. And whereas the dedicated service of public safety communicators is a silent service and their duties are seldom observed by the public, our communicators daily serve the citizens of Cape Girardeau in countless ways without due recognition by the beneficiaries of their care. Whereas each year, the second full week of April is dedicated to the men and women who serve as public safety telecommunicators. In 1991, Congress proclaimed it a nationally recognized week of recognition. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bob Fox, Mayor of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, do hereby proclaim the week of April 11th to the 17th, 2021, as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, and urge all citizens to join in honoring the men and women whose diligence and professionalism have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, the suppression of friars, the treatment of those requiring medical attention, and whose dedication keep our city and citizens safe. Gentlemen of the council, thank you for the recognition. Uh, my name is Josh McKinney. I'm a shift supervisor uh, with the 911 Center here in Cape Girardeau. I just wanted to speak a little bit. First off, again, thank you guys for the recognition. Um, our job is uh, we're always heard but seldom seen. 24-7, um, 365, we are sitting there uh, waiting to answer the 911 calls, the radios uh, from the police, fire, and uh, medical dispatch for the city. Uh, we just, uh, first, we want to thank you guys um, for the upgrades that we've gotten in the last year. Um, the citizens of Cape Girardeau uh, don't quite understand, I'm sure, um, how important it is to keep that, that stuff updated. But when you do, we're given the opportunity to not only dispatch faster and more correctly to get the proper units there quicker and faster, but we're also able to locate people who don't know where they're at uh, via the new 911 system. 
Um, and currently, uh, within the past month, we've able to uh, integrate the text to 911 system. So now you can text into 911. Um, we actually, last night, uh, we were able to take a text to 911 call. Um, came in last night on our while I was working. So um, it's a great system. And, um, you know, we, we sit up there. Uh, like I said, we work 12-hour shifts uh, protecting the city. Um, we're sort of the first people you talk to. Um, and our job is really to make sure you have a good interaction on your worst day. Uh, we're trying to give you the best interaction you can with police or fire. Um, we take great pride in what we do. Uh, and we appreciate your guys' support through this recognition. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Now I believe we have an update from the Cape Girardeau Airport Board. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I'd like to introduce our board chairman, Ryan Durock. He's going to give you all an update and an overview of what the Airport Advisory Board does. All right. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Council, uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Mayor. Um, at the Airport Board, uh, History goes back uh, from what I've been able to gather since uh, the airport was uh, purchased uh, as Harris Field. Um, and uh, uh, I've been uh, grateful to know several people that have been on the board before me. And uh, I've spent a lot of time at the airport uh, uh, growing up when I was a kid. And uh, it was a very meaningful place to me, and uh, which is where my service comes in to uh, wanting to continue to see that the airport uh, uh, does well and continues to thrive. Um, the airport board, um, what we do is basically we'll, we meet once a month and uh, through our liaison with city council, Stacy Kinder, um, we discuss any prominent things that may be coming up. Um, Katrina does a great job uh, of keeping us informed, things that are happening, things that are coming up, uh, something that uh, you know may not necessarily be on everyone's radar, but it's on hers, um, and, uh, and she lets us know about it. Um, and uh, what we try to do is just provide uh, uh, and facilitate uh, in, in any way we can uh, through our insight from personal uh, perspective and professional perspectives um, to to kind of let her know what what we think, uh, what we hear from the community, and uh, uh, what uh, what we can do to better help uh, prepare her and her interactions with the airport and uh, with city council and, and what uh, what she does on a day to day basis. Um, in addition to that, uh, we work on uh, special projects. Uh, there were a number of us that were involved with the air show uh, a couple years ago, and that was a great experience. Uh, a lot of uh, long hours, uh, a lot of stuff leading up to that point. It's, it's not just the two-hour show, and, and that's it. There's a lot behind the scenes that uh, most people don't realize and don't see. You don't see. want to do that every year. Don't want to do that every year, absolutely not. Uh, although it may make it a little easier in planning, but uh, certainly not, uh, um, certainly not in doing the show. But uh, open houses as well. And then another thing that's coming up uh, this summer um, is the airline selection, which is a uh, critical role that we play in uh, helping to um, decide on where the airport uh, should go uh, for the next two years, four years, what, whatever it ends up. Uh, being uh, for that, but uh, the FAA provides a lot of uh, uh, guidance and insight uh, as well as uh, city council and Katrina does um, all kinds of um, uh, what would we say uh, reports or surveys, uh, things of that nature um, from when we went to from Cape Air to what we have now with Sky West. Uh, it was a big jump, but I think it was a jump that was definitely needed and uh, definitely got us to the boardings. Uh, that we were uh, hoping for and the, the service that we were hoping for that we know that the airport can provide uh, not just Cape Girardeau but the region itself um, and then uh, any uh, uh, guidance on future planning is coming up obviously uh, with new terminal new tea hangers uh, anything going on with that uh, that uh, is is what we try to do uh, so that we can uh, bring 
insight and uh, allow you guys to make a uh, very, very informed decision when it comes to uh, the future of the airport and uh, where everyone sees that it needs to go. Katrina, I'll leave it to you. We appreciate the time and dedication you all put in this and the recommendations you give us. And it's uh, time well spent. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, they, they do an excellent job. Um, they are really good sounding board for me and me bringing things to them and bouncing ideas off of, you know, a, a unique group of people. I did want to just touch on really quick, we do have the essential air service selection coming up. The order was just put out by the Department of Transportation. It's been a quick two years, but we're now up to um, receive new bids for our air service. Um, that is one of the most important tasks that the board assists you know, me with, with interviewing and making sure we present to you all the best recommendation for the airport and the community. Um, I think we have a pretty interesting uh, bidding cycle coming up with, with COVID, but I do know that SkyWest is extremely happy with our community. I don't know that we're looking to make any changes, but you know, we have to allow the process to, to vet itself out. So we are working on that. And so we'll be coming back before you probably in the next couple of months with the recommendation. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you for a great report. Uh, communications and reports, Council. Um, first of all, thank you everybody for wearing your masks. <laughs> I just have to jump on this uh, every time whenever we have communications <clears throat> and reports and just encourage everybody continue to wear masks, continue to wash your hands and socially distance. Um, we're getting closer, but it's not over yet. So patience is key and make sure that everybody just kind of keeps up with uh, all COVID protocols for the health of the city and the health of the region. In addition to that, I want to um, express my deepest sympathies to the members of the Church of Latter-day Saints uh, and the loss of their, their building uh, last night. You know, I, I know a, a church building is not its congregation, and your, your congregation is strong, but that is just always a, a tough experience, and just I want to express my, my deepest sympathies to that entire congregation. Um, that is just really a tough thing to go through. Anybody else? I just wanted to put a plug in because this is our last meeting before. Uh, on Saturday, May 1st, we have the Muddy River Marathon coming to Cape Girardeau. Um, the numbers are great. It's going to be a great event. I, no one would ever accuse me of being a long distance runner themselves or myself, but uh, I have been to help with some marathons in the past and they're really neat events. It's a great energy. And it's amazing that it's here in Cape Girardeau. We're going to have our first, and I would I would highly recommend everyone to come out as a community and support those that are traveling into town as well as our local people as they uh, participate in that event. It's a big deal. Anybody else? Okay, I had the pleasure of uh, welcoming the American Duchess. Uh, on Saturday the 8th, the first cru river cruise boat to dock here in well over a year and a half. Uh, due to COVID protocol, things were a little different. They did not allow them to get off and wander around downtown like all the merchants would have liked. Uh, they took uh, tours on by bus. Uh, but I've been assured that as uh, the protocol advances and by the end of June, they will then require all people to be vaccinated. And when that happens, they will again allow people under certain guidelines to get off and wander around and, and uh, go to restaurants and stores and whatnot, which the downtown merchants greatly appreciate. There are, I think, after, I think there are another 18 stops they're going to make this, the rest of this year here. So that's a big deal for our downtown. And uh, we had the celebration at the completion of the uh, flood wall project. Uh, with uh, in combination with the Corps of Engineers. It was a 15-year project that started in 2006 and was over $20 million, uh, 17 and a half, which was paid by the federal government. And uh, our city helped with that also. Uh, if you have not seen it, I think on our website, there is still a video of the time lapse of 72 hours when they had to remove sections of track, dig down in and replace things under the wall and get it all back. 
and they worked around the clock for 72 hours and it was it's amazing to watch that from start to finish if you get a chance watch that but we have a great relationship with the core and uh, I think that it was great to to have that thing finished for sure Scott anything uh, yeah I have a just a couple of announcements so uh, firstly uh, we have uh, we're moving our city facilities to recommended masks from required masks a week from today on the uh, April 26th. So um, we'll be changing our signage up and and after we've uh, uh, worked through that, uh, we, we waited until a while after the county uh, removed the um, mask mandate. Uh, because we had some employees that had ha had been going through the vaccination process and they needed to get through both their shots in the time phase. So that, that allows that to happen. It protects our employees the most. We have our employees that provide essential services throughout the city. We think it's worth the extra protection. So, uh, but we are going to make that change a week from today on the 26th. Um, 24th, I believe we have Special Olympics on the 24th. And, uh, and then also we have uh, Friends of the Parks or the Great Cape Cleanup on the 24th. So a uh, great opportunity to get out and clean up the parks, uh, bring your kids. I think you'll get a hot dog and some chips and a t-shirt if you if you come come for those. And uh, do we want them to register ahead of time, if that possible? Great, but it's not necessary. Yeah. So, um, and pray for no rain, but we'll, <laughs> we'll work on that. I guess. Yeah. No, no, don't talk about snow. I think that's going to miss us. I think that's those those weather guys get kind of squirrely. But is that right, Roger? <laughs> that's all I have, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Uh, appearances by advisory board applicants. Anybody here this evening? We have two from the airport advisory board. Hannah Seesing and Tamika Randall. You all want to say anything at all, <laughs> or just acknowledge that you're here? And and the Tamika's never a loss for words. Well, since she forced me to. <laughs> uh, no, um, you all know I've been a resident of Cape Girardeau for 20 years, so I would say my personal philosophy has been service and of this community. Um, I served in many capacities on campus and within the community and schools and different things like that. Um, I wanted to take my professional skills and also work with the airport advisory boards to continue to make a difference. Um, had a chance to talk with Katrina on several occasions and really love what the airport is doing in advance in our community. Um, she's a great ambassador. I hope to be the same. She said the airport is the gateway for the community and those things to bring people in here when we talk about recruitment with schools, when we talk about bringing in revenue. And so I would like to be a part of that process and hopefully get a chance to serve in that capacity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Don't think so. Are there any appearances this evening for items not listed on the agenda? Any appearances for any items not listed on the agenda? Okay. Uh, if that's uh, nobody here, then we'll uh, go to agenda review. Scott? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have uh, no public hearings tonight. Um, just to uh, let you know, uh, Parks and uh, Planning and Zoning Commission report uh, um, wasn't able to be here tonight. So, but er I think everything's good. I don't, uh, everything. Uh, but if you have any questions, we can try to get those as the items come up. Um, our consent agenda tonight. We have um, the second and third reading of ordinances from last time. Uh, Cypress Grove subdivision. The record plat there. Record plat for the Highlands of Hopper Crossing Phase Three, the um, uh, record plat for Touchdown Ridge uh, Two, and the um, the uh, changing of uh, Chapter Thirty by changing the zoning of, of uh, Hawthorne uh, on Hawthorne Road. This was a hearing last time. It's uh, along uh, Hawthorne uh, across the street from some of the other uh, uh, properties that have been built there. Um, then we have. Uh, Second, third reading for the permanent utility easements from JMD properties from Mid America out on Route K. And then we have the second, third readings for the fats, oils, and grease or fog uh, control uh, in, in the city. 
so this this ordinance uh, actually uh, allows uh, people to um, not have their things serviced if they have another inspection, but it requires them to then pay for that inspection. But paying for an inspection is less than having it serviced. So gives some flexibility. Uh, fogs, oils, and greases is something we started several years ago. Um, can't remember about probably about four or five years ago, uh, and uh, has been really good for our sewer system to to have this. But as we get it, we want to tweak it and make sure it's. Uh, helps uh, business owners as much as we can. And so this, this gives them some flexibility, helps them save some money and makes sense. So uh, number eight is the, uh, is the recipient, uh, we acknowledges receipt of an annexation petition uh, by the Canes and uh, sets a public hearing for the proposed annexation. So that'll start that process. Uh, number nine is the implementation of the Show Me Courts, Court Automation software. So this is something that came from the state uh, to get everybody on the same automation software. And so we'll be converting to that. And uh, this uh, starts that process. Um, then number 10 is the resolution approving the uh, uh, finance bonds for the Industrial Development Authority. Uh, this is for Southeast Hospital. I think they have a representative here. If anybody has any questions about that, uh, he'll be able to, to handle those. And then um, lastly on the consent agenda is uh, the acceptance of the public improvements out on Route K, which is the uh, number six, the Mid-America property that uh, is getting property. So are there any of those uh, consent agenda items that you would like to have removed? Yeah, but on number five, um, Scott, um, Eric, I need to abstain due to financial conflict of interest. So noted. Any others? Okay. Now we'll go to the uh, new ordinances. We have four new ordinances. The first one is a is regarding Chapter 25 of the uh, of the code. Uh, this is regarding uh, off street parking. Uh, so one of the things we have sometimes is somebody moves into a to a um, a development that was developed for something else, and they move in, and then uh, because it's a different function, then it requires more off street parking. Well, this allows us to allows the city manager to take a look at that and, and uh, maybe uh, require less off-street parking if it makes sense, but it has to meet certain criteria. There's three criteria that are, that are there, um, but it's similar to what we uh, do in the, C in the uh, central business district where we don't require off-street parking, obviously, because of how that was developed. So it uses some of that theory to, to come and give more flexibility, and I know that's one of the things that council has, has asked us to look at uh, over the last few years, to look at how we can be more flexible for development and especially redevelopment because redevelopment is a, is a different animal. If you're going to go out and build on brand new property, then yeah, you need to be, you need to meet all the codes, but where you're trying to redevelop something, that's a little different picture. So this allows, allows that to happen. Uh, number 13 is uh, two permanent utility easements out of Dalhousie. Um, number 14 is the record plat at Timber Creek uh, for subdivision. This is off of Cape Rock up near Lexington, taking two lots and making one. And then number 15 is the Roberts subdivision. This is a Stone Ridge um, out New Bloom, Bloomfield Road. This takes a duplex and makes it from one lot uh, to two. Uh, any questions regarding the new ordinances? If not, we have uh, three appointments tonight to the Airport Advisory Board, the Special Business District Advisory Commission, and the Town Plaza Community Improvement District. I believe you have those uh, indications, Mayor. And uh, that will be all. Okay. If that's the case, then we will move right into regular session. We'll have the uh, roll call, please. Fox. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Stacy Kinder. Here. Shelley Moore. Here. Dan Presson. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. Shannon Truxel. Here. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Motion by Robbie, seconded by Shannon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. We have no public hearings, but I do have an announcement. Uh, council has had an extensive process in searching for and selecting a new city manager. First, I want to thank GovHR and Mark Peterson for their help and expertise throughout this process. Second, I want to thank our city staff. 
from the surveys at the beginning to helping with arrangements for candidates, tours, interviews, uh, their input in this process was invaluable. Third, I want to thank the council for their time and dedication to, to get this process done. We were blessed to have several great candidates. And it's a difficult decision when you have so many good candidates. But one candidate stood out. One seemed to be the perfect fit for Cape Girardeau. We have hired a visionary leader and a great communicator. His name is Kenneth Haskin from Texarkana, Arkansas. And there will be a press conference uh, Thursday at noon uh, right here and here. And Mr. Haskin will be here to meet and greet and meet the media. And we are just thrilled to death to have him on board. His information and bio and so forth has been sent to the media, and uh, he is available for them to contact and ask questions and so forth. So, but he will be here Thursday, and we are excited. I mean, truly excited. Are there any appearances this evening for any comments for items listed on the agenda? Yes, sir. I'd like to discuss about the board. Would you come up and identify yourself, please, and give your name and address? Hello, my name is Brian Lamberth. I live at uh, 2873 Hopper Road. I would like to talk about uh, the petition to change the rezoning of that. If I could give you all some material, is that all right? It's all right. This is a petition that I went around and had everybody in the surrounding area that adjoins the property that you were talking about rezoning. And I have 100% of the signatures of all the property owners around the property that are kind of really against us. If you'll look through the petition, we state the different things that we're talking about that we have problems with now. One is trying to get in and out of the property when the school is in session. When Kids are unloading and loading. Um, also, the flood issues that we have currently right now as we speak. Um, I've also contacted the city on the drainage about this uh, with the current issues that I have now, along with uh, my adjoining uh, neighbors. If you would look on this particular page right here, this is a flood map of the area. If you'll see where I've went through and put and highlight on those areas, you'll see the different spots that around that we're having issues with. And you can see the pictures of my yard and the adjoining yards of this is just after small rains. And it takes days for this to get away at the current problems that we're having right now. Um, if you look at the one page here that you'll see, this is a picture from my carport, my garage. This is at night. And this is after it had been raining probably just a couple hours. As you can see, the water is at the same height as what the sidewalk is. And as people go down because of all the rain coming off of the top of Hopper Road now, and the water coming off from the uh, parking lot of the school, Clifford School, right across the street from my house, all this water comes out the hopper road and puddles up. As cars go by, all that water gets washed over into my property, into the, all those properties there on the front of hopper. As you can see in this flood map, this in the blue is all in the flood zone. And with these back here, this is the property that you're talking about rezoning. And that is in the flood zone also. Um, he's going to have to build this property up or otherwise he's not going to get loans for this property. So with that said, all this water is going to be coming more towards me with the runoff. I know it's on the agenda that he can put up to 27 townhouses in this particular area. If you put all that in consideration with the blacktop and those townhouses, the runoff, um, I'm trying to figure out where all this water is going to go. Um, I'm really worried now because, as you can see, with the water when it does puddle up, I have to put a pump out here 
at the end of my property and pump water over into the street and hoping and praying that it's not going to keep continuing on a steady hard downpour and get into my home. Uh, I've actually done a lot of dirt work on the property myself right now and I'm continuing to do more to keep the, the problems that I already have currently. But if you rezone this back area back there, I'm, I'm, me and my neighbors, we are all very concerned about flood issues that we already have right now. Um, the back part of my property, um, I think I have a picture here, but on the back side, which is what this property here is with the long fence line, all along that back area back there, it is standing water after a rain, after we have a rain, it is standing water all the time. I mean, for days. Um, but you'll see where I highlighted those different areas in orange to get the idea of, of the different things that I've, I'm having the problems with and the saturation issues that we're having with the flood at the moment. I know the uh, city does want to increase tax revenue, but in the same aspect, what are we going to do to this where I'm already having flood issues now? And I've sent things into the city, emails and uh, pictures, these same pictures into the, to the city, to the board or to the um, person that's over the, the, uh, the sewer drainage or the drainage, water drainage, uh, Greg Middleton, and I've never received a response back. Thank you. Did you uh, appear before the P&Z Commission when they... I was before that commission. Um, the gentleman that, that is proposing to do this, the letter was, there was another property owner that emailed. They thought I was that person. Um, they emailed the same letter he emailed. They gave to that person to basically go through the different things. I gave all my presentation, the different documents to the, the council then. They voted unanimously. It was like they had already made their minds up. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what's going to go on with the flood issues that I have now. And with, you know, we've got different things that's, I've been lucky enough now so far that we haven't had torrential downfalls. But with all the extra building that's going on above, above me, which is Mount Auburn and Hopper, uh, where Bennett Dentistry is, that subdivision that's being developed there, you have all that runoff coming down now that's gonna be filling into this creek. Um, once the parking lot is going into a rock basin with Clifford School, it flows there from into a drainage dish that goes on into the bigger creek. Once that is up to a certain spot, that drainage pipe cannot go in then it flows on out into the street that's where we get the puddling in the street and then in turn as people they love the the big four-wheel drive trucks love coming down my street because they want to see how far they can spread the water huh. and uh you know it's it just continuously just comes in my yard and i just can't i can't keep up with it so what i'm getting from the front with the street if this gets developed in the back, then I'm going to have it in the back side also. I'm, I'm going to be underwater, folks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I have a question on that was, he was referring several times to Hopper Road as a rezoning. The rezoning that is on the council's agenda tonight has to do with Hawthorne Road. Is that the issue that's being referred to? Okay. Item number five. Is this the first time that you've presented this petition in opposition? I was trying to bring, excuse me, I was trying to actually come here and, and speak with you all that uh, on the fourth, or the was the fourth your last meeting? Yeah, previous meeting. The Planning and Zoning Commission meeting was at seven o'clock. I didn't realize that your all's meeting was at five. Otherwise, I would have been here. I was here right at, at 
seven you no, we, Mr. Meyer we, you you, you yeah, saw me yes, so yeah. uh but I, I was trying to actually present what I just presented to everyone today I was trying to do that on the fifth but didn't know that uh, this meeting was met at five o'clock so that's where I'm at so I don't know that staff has had the opportunity to review the adequacy of this petition I gave all the same information to them that night which, when, which was on the, the planning and zoning the planning and zoning commission when they had their meeting on the what was it the 19th of march i believe have they reviewed march the 10th? adequacy of the petition I, don't know the answer I brought all of those same points up at that meeting and they went right down the line and all voted for it okay. well did you say you got a res they sent the response to someone else in response to all of your issues my neighbor down the street if you will if you will go back to the map the flood map that's the best way to kind of get an idea here if you look on this flood map my address is 2873 right here okay. right down the street the two places down is the bigger one the long one down here this is right here right that, that is the church that's there on on hopper right next to the church in between that and the gentleman that actually sent in the email that piece of property been for sale for a long time he jumped in and bought it because he found out that this person that had bought this property that's trying to put the townhouses in was trying to buy that too. That way he had a complete cul-de-sac to go around and enter and out of the same. Now, you know, by him buying that, that kept him from having two entrances into the property. He can only use the one that he's got off of Hawthorne. But he, that gentleman is the gentleman that sent in the email to the commission, to the planning board. They, to me, forward that email to uh, Mr. Jones, I believe it is, um, that is trying to get this rezoned. He basically come up and addressed every one of those different points that we've basically talked about, which is the flooding, the problems with the school of the entering, um, trying to get in and out of your property now at the certain points now, and the different things that we have in the petition but those were all addressed by that mr jones that night when i came up and spoke he thought i was that gentleman um, he didn't realize i was another property owner on down the street but uh, i'm just trying to figure out i mean what's going to be addressed here we have a major issue with the flooding you know in between the properties and with the like i said the low-lying area and if certain areas aren't done and this does get approved you let that get built the creek the back creek in there that is on in behind is actually butts up to the walking trail if that creek is up to its banks and then you add these properties that's going to have all the overflow runoff that's going to go into that too if that creek's backed up that's going to back up onto those properties and then in turn back up onto mine there's just no way around it and then in turn you're also going to have also to think about all the properties on the other side of that creek that you know we've got a lot of building and development in cape i'm all for it but when we we've also got to think about and that's what you all are here for is to think about the different rezoning and why we've what we've got to make sure we're keeping up with everything um well, like I said, with the other development that's on the other side of Hopper, where Bennett Dentistry is, all those new houses, you've got all that runoff there that's coming down that's now going into that same creek. Um, we've got more and more just being built. Um, where Mr. Jones is actually building now, all the other townhouses and everything, and they're built, they're put in like sardines, which is out close to Linwood Church now. I forget the name of the street, but it's off Route W. And I'm trying to keep that from being, you know, behind in my backyard, basically having 20 more townhouses that there's still tons of them, of them for rent right now that they still don't have filled, but we're wanting to put more in. 
Um, I understand the housing community is probably going to take a jump like it did in 2008. So I guess he's making on rental property. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> procedure wise, as we, as we, as you consider, um, zoning, you're considering whether or not it's an appropriate zoning. Uh, you're not considering really related development and, uh, the amount of, of, uh, Stormwater. We we regulate stormwater, obviously, and and the ones you mentioned up uh, along Hopper, they have detention basins and stuff that's built in to to detain and and mitigate that. And I, but I understand there's a concern, and I you know I'm, I'm I'm sorry that you didn't get the opportunity last time, and I'm sorry that you that they answered the wrong wrong, wrong way, but uh, or the wrong person, but. Uh, I do want to just point out that, that the, the process is about considering whether or not it's an appropriate to to do that, not about the stormwater. The, but the legal there, issue would be as the question of the uh, petition that he has submitted tonight, whether that is adequate, and if it is adequate, then it would change the uh, voting to a supermajority requirement on the council. And I don't know whether city staff has had the opportunity to look into the sufficiency of that petition. We have not. And if that's the, the case, it might be a good idea to, uh, to postpone this, to give staff the opportunity to check the adequacy of the petition and then revisit the issue since it's on for second and third reading this evening. Okay. At that point, uh, then probably we should pull this from the consent agenda and talk about it as part of the regular agenda. Do we need a motion to the floor? Yes. So moved. Second. Motion made by Stacy, seconded by Nate to uh, remove number five from the consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Okay. We will do that. Anything else? Anybody here to speak about something on the agenda this evening? If not, we will move right to the consent agenda. Eric? Bill number 21-47, an ordinance proving record plat of Cypress Grove subdivision, ordinance proving record plat of Cypress Grove subdivision, Bill number 21-48, an ordinance proving record plat of the Highlands at Hopper Crossing Phase 3, an ordinance proving record plat of the Highlands at Hopper Crossing Phase 3. Number 21 49, an ordinance proving the record plat of Touchdown Ridge 2, an ordinance proving the record plat of Touchdown Ridge 2. Bill number 21 51, an ordinance accepting two permanent utility easements from JMD Industries Inc. and Mid America Highway K LLC for property located at 4072 State Highway K in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance accepting two permanent utility easements from JMD Industries Inc. and Mid America Highway K LLC for property located at 4072 State Highway K in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 21-52, an ordinance amending Chapter 29 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, regarding fat oils and grease control, an ordinance amending Chapter 29 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, regarding fat oils and grease control. Number 21-53, a resolution acknowledging receipt of an annexation petition from Justin A. Kane and Carrie A. Kane and setting a public hearing regarding the proposed annexation. Number 21-54, resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with the Office of State Courts Administrator for the implementation of the Show Me Courts Court Automation Software in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 21-55, resolution approving the project for Southeast Hospital to be financed by the Industrial Development Authority of the County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. You have before you the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Robbie, seconded by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries. We have one item removed from the consent agenda. That's Bill 2150, uh, which it sounds like staff needs to authenticate the, the uh, petition. Uh, I'd like to move to table that for the next meeting so the staff can, uh, can review the petition. Second. Motion been made and seconded that we table that. Any discussion? Uh, I have a question um, regarding the uh, staff will authenticate the petition. Will there also be more information? Um, I mean, there's a number of issues brought up. 
uh, although I know that, I mean, I understand that right. the zoning is the, is the only sure. thing on the, in this issue, but it, it seems like there's separate issues. I, yeah, we, we can provide some additional background information about what, about the concerns and, and, and uh, provide that as well, yes. Uh, we have a motion before us. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. That is table to our next meeting upon uh, to certify the authenticity of the petition, which would uh, guide us in how we vote on that when it comes up again. New ordinances. Bill number 20-21-56, an ordinance amending chapter 25 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girard, Missouri regarding off-street parking regulations. So moved. Motion by Robbie, seconded by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 21-57, an ordinance accepting two permanent utility easements from Dalhousie LLC for 4741 and 4743 Cords Way in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 21-58, an ordinance to approve the record plate of Timber Creek 4th subdivision. Submit. Motion by Robbie. Seconded by Shannon. All, any, any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 21-59, an ordinance approving the record plan of Roberts subdivision. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, appointments. We have four appointments to make to the airport board. Uh, and those are, you know, they didn't delineate. There are three that have a, that I have to look this up for, that end, there are three year terms and one is fulfilling a term. Uh, we did not delineate that. So normally, Mr. Mayor, what's been done on that is the people that had the most votes would get, would be the one that would get the uh, three terms, and then okay. the the lesser would get the uh, partial term. Okay. So we have uh, Mike Marshall, Tamika Randall, Joe Uzaro for the three-year terms, and Hannah Cece for the uh, fulfilling the term of, uh, I can't remember who Mark it was, Walker. Mark Walker. So uh, moved. Motion made by Robbie. Second. Second by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion approved. We have four new members for the airport advisory board. That's good. Performance to the Special Business District <coughs> Advisory Commission. And those are Kent Zigfield, David Hudson, Dennis Doc Kane, and Jim Mavers. So, second. Motion by Nate, second by Robbie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. And the last but not least, appointment to the Town Plaza Community Improvement District Board of Directors, and that is Jeffrey Campbell. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Nate. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All, okay, that's good. I have no other business unless somebody else does. Make a motion to adjourn, Mayor. If not, I have a motion to adjourn. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned. We're having a photo, oh, so don't run. Second meeting in a row, we're tied.